Welcome to the simple neuroscience of note-taking. Take notes on this lecture is a phrase you hear in any high school or college on a daily basis. But what is the point of note-taking? Before we dive into what good note-taking is, let's chat about memory. You may have learned that there is both short and long-term memory. Short is less time than people often think, and it applies to anything you remember for about a minute or less which is typically about how long I remember anyone's name when they tell me for the first time. However, long-term memory can apply to any memory that is kept for a few minutes to years. Some long-term memories can feel very automatic. For instance, if I asked you what your mom's name is, you probably wouldn't have to think very hard. But if I were to catch you at the grocery store and ask you to tell me everything you need to buy for the lasagna you're making for dinner, you might have to think harder. This is because something like your mom's name you've rehearsed many, many times. You've probably heard other people say it, had to write it on your own medical forms, heard other family members use it, whereas you only decided to make lasagna this morning and have only looked at that recipe once. Let me preface this by saying that the memory pathway is one of the most confusing and ironically hard to remember systems in the brain, but we'll break it down so it makes more sense. So information starts out coming into the sensory association areas, then to the entorhinal cortex, the dentate gyrus, the CA3, CA1, subiculum, alveus, fimbria, mammillary body, anterior nucleus of the thalamus, cingulate gyrus, which is influenced by the nuclei of the amygdala, and then to the parahippocampal cortex, and finally the neocortex. Confused? Yeah, me too. Let's break this down a little more. In general, all of the information comes in by one of your five senses. The more senses you involve, the stronger the memory. On a side note, smell makes extremely strong memories but I would recommend taking notes rather than sniffing your professors. So then from the sensory areas, the signal is passed through various structures to the hippocampus, where it is encoded, then passed through the emotion areas of the cingulate gyrus and the amygdala. This is why the best and worst memories are the easiest to remember. Strong emotion is equated to strong memory. And then all of this is stored in the neocortex. The neocortex is like a room full of filing cabinets with different labels on them. Every time you learn something, your brain tries to put it in a folder. New math gets linked with old math. The new great aunt you just learned about goes with other family members as you try and figure out how you're related to them. So when you're in class and the teacher asks you to take notes, the goal is not to write it all down, rather to give your brain enough cues so that it knows what folder to open to find that information. Also, consolidating your notes forces you to both retrieve the information again and encodes the signal more thoroughly, so that eventually the content becomes more like your mom's name and less like that lasagna recipe. Thank you for watching!